Hey there everyone and welcome back to JavaScript series. So let's just get started and move forward in our HTML document. So, so far we have seen a lot of stuff which is like input and buttons and all of those tags. Now let's go ahead and create a few more elements in this HTML document and understand how these actually work. And this is gonna be super helpful if you're gonna move forward into Node, React, Angular, whatever that is, because some version of this exact concept, they use that in there. And so far we have learned that we can have an input and can have a button. But in reality, uh, most of the time this is just being used for a search box or something like that. When, the, when you create a login or a sign up, we use an actual form there. Now this form has a default action. We don't need to worry much about how the action is gonna be. And what you can do with this uh, form is you can have multiple inputs. And when you hit the submit button there, it actually submits the entire form. You can have multiple inputs and all these things. You have seen that quite a lot. So let's just have an input. So there we go, we have an input, there we go. Now right now I do have an input of type uh, text there, but I need a couple of more elements inside it uh, when I use that inside a form. Previously I was not using any name, ID, placeholder, anything like that, but now I need to use that. So let's just say I use a name and usually when you have this kind of email or anything like that, then we use something known as email or maybe password or maybe username, okay? Let's use a username for that. And for the placeholder, we're gonna say uh, something like username. There we go. And I think that is it. And you can also target an ID or something like that, but in this case, we don't need it. And then you can have a simple button and there we go, button, and we are gonna simply say, uh, button colon, I need this submit one. Okay, there we go, type equals submit. Now when you have this submit kind of button, what you can do is you can have multiple inputs and it's gonna submit all of that information to wherever you want once you click the submit. It doesn't submit each one of them, rather it submits all of them. You can have multiple inputs. So first and foremost, let's just save that and see how it looks on the browser. It is not drastically different. It's just a simple username and you hit the submit. But when you hit the submit, notice it just uses a browser thing on the URL which says username equals blank. And if you write something here, let's just say you write the John there. Why do I type O capital in the John always? So hit submit and notice now the username equals John is being submitted. Now it is not being submitted to anywhere because we didn't mention it where to take this action. And Obviously we don't need it right now. And especially with the evolution of the Node.js and stuff like that, we actually don't need it much. So what you can do is we can just place a class there just for fun, because previously we used an ID. So we're gonna call this as my form. Okay, now we want to simply write a simple JavaScript uh, validation here. And I'm gonna be giving you again some assignments there. And what we want in this that uh, whatever the user is typing inside this input form, we want to grab that value. And as soon as the user hit the submit, we want to reset this form and that's it. And also we don't want anything to be happening inside this URL. This thing which says username equals John, this should not appear on the URL. So how we can do that? And honestly, this is actually super, super easy. So what we can do is, uh, whenever user hit the submit, we are gonna be performing that action. So we're gonna be moving on to this validation and I'm gonna be simply putting a comment which says form uh, validation uh, next video or something like that. So what we can do is we can use simply document dot, again, you can use uh, get element by ID or something. In this case, query selector makes sense. Now again, in programming, there are hundreds of ways doing the things, probably all of them are correct. And it's always dependent on where you are more comfortable. And since we are using a class this time, so we're gonna be using dot my form, there we go. So we have now selected this form. Yes, surely you could have placed the IDs into this input or stuff like that. Uh, that is also totally valid, but I wanted to show you one more way of doing the thing. So we are selecting directly this form and uh, this form can have multiple inputs. So we're gonna be looking up for that. So now this form is gonna be useful for us only and only when we add an event listener to it. So let's just add an event listener there. And it requires you to pass on first of all the event and then the function, which is a callback. The only event which is usually used in the form in almost all application is submit because that's how it is being triggered. And then we can use our arrow function, which is just like this, arrows, and there we go. Now this arrow function also has an access to something known as event, there we go. 
And once you have an access to this event, what you can do is a couple of things. First of all, we're going to log a few things. And this is going to be event dot target dot and then you mention after the target you mention the name that you have given to this in this case it is a username but it can be another one let me just show you for the fun stuff uh, that we do have another tag which has not username uh, something like real name okay and placeholder would be real name it's really hard in the world of internet that anybody would be writing real name but hey let's just assume that and how does our HTML looks like it says username real name and submit now first and foremost I would like to show you without saving this validation that how it actually works onto this URL so username let's just say it's gonna be Sammy and real name is gonna be Samuel there we go and when I hit submit notice everything is being displayed on the URL so this is the thing we want to get rid of now okay there we go basic stuff also let me clear this up so how we can do that we want to grab both the values now so event dot target dot and then you mention the name here okay so we are going to copy this username and we are going to paste that and of course we don't want to get that we want a value of that okay so there we go and i'm going to hit command shift d to grab the this time not the username i want i want real name okay copy that and paste that so we'll be printing both of them and it should be absolutely fine let's just save that go back here uh, clean that up and username is going to be sammy and the real name is going to be samuel and hit submit and there we go sammy and samuel are being printed okay step one is solved and notice uh, that automatically when we submit that our form gets uh, refreshed or we can say it gets empty that's okay now we want to get rid of this guy from the URL. Now this is the default behavior of the URL. So we definitely want to get rid of this default behavior of the URL. And for that, we do have this event and it, it comes up with a method which says prevent default. And notice it just says prevent defaults and it's self-explanatory, nothing much. Whatever the browser is doing as a default, we just want to get rid of that. So save that, let's just go back here and hit reload, clean that and we are gonna say Sammy and Samuel and hit submit and obviously it doesn't did the job because I forgot to clean that okay it is actually doing its job but I forgot to clean that from the URL so there we go this is a fresh web page now and let's just do something like uh, it's gonna be uh, let's use something else we are gonna say Hulk as a username and real name is gonna be Bruce so hit submit notice nothing appeared there we got everything on the console but we created another problem that our form is not getting refreshed pretty okay uh, since the browser default behavior is to push everything onto this url and then clean that up and we start that behavior so that's why it's not printing up so we have to write one more line of code in order to do so and what we can do is we can simply say event dot target dot user name dot value and we're gonna just clean that value just like this with an empty string okay so i hope we are able to do it now let's just try that one more time it's gonna be hulk for the username and bruce and hit submit and notice our username got cleaned up but bruce didn't got cleaned up okay and but still everything we are getting into the browser so here's a quick challenge for you now you should be able to clean up this real name as well so i hope everybody will be able to do it that should be pretty simple and i also want you to click i also want you to create a simple form which is a sign up form which asks the user for its username its email address its password and the repeat password again and also i want you to create a simple validation that checks whether the password is equals to password 2 which is going to be notice we sometimes on the website ask for password and repeat your password so if that is not true we want to print a simple paragraph there so create an element at that time and simply print a password there that password doesn't match okay i know this is a too much of the work but this is how everybody learns so uh, don't be lazy create all these assignments and submit them as well so that's it for this video and i'm going to catch you up in the next one